Hi, my name is Keith Nipka. I'm the Battleship Operations Manager. And today we have a, another virtual adventure. This one's a little special as I am interviewing my parents, John and Linda Nitka. They're here on a visit from, uh, from their home up in New Jersey. And uh, we thought it would be a good idea to kind of get the perspective of, the, uh, of my parents. So to give a little background, my father is a combat veteran in Vietnam. And my mom, of course, was married to him at the time. And then I, on board Battleship Wisconsin, went to war with, uh, with the battleship in uh, Operation Desert Storm. So we were going to get a little perspective from a parent's point of view, or a wife's point of view, as far as uh, a loved one being deployed and in the military. So I want to thank you for joining me today, and uh, just going to be right over here. So again, thank you. Uh, Again, this is uh, this is my parents, John and Linda Nitka. Um, and if, can you just give me a little background on on you as a couple, so to speak, like that? Sure. Um, I met your dad when I just turned seventeen. Um, kind of fell head over heels since he knocked me down. <laughs> Didn't bother to pick me up. <laughs> um, and we were married about eighteen months later. Um, I was eighteen. We knew he was going to Vietnam, and um, we wanted to have that time together before he left. It was a very scary time, and um, um, he was a guy with a really good sense of humor. Um, he loved to dance, and he made me laugh. And as I say all the time, God sent him home to me, and that's why we have what we have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The first question here is, uh, so when I enlisted, I was only 17 years old. Yes, you were. And you, of course, needed to give permission for me to join the Navy. Correct. What was it like to have to give permission for me to go into the Navy after knowing what Dad had gone through when he went to Vietnam? Um, I, you always wanted to go into the military. From as little as I can remember your being, I think some of that came because you had such a pride in your dad and what he did. He was involved with the VFW and the American Legion. Um, and so we had envisioned at one point, you're graduating high school and going off to college as so many young people did, but that's not what was in your heart to do. And discussing your going into the military as pretty much a military family, um, we came to grips with the fact that this was your choice and we needed to support you in that. Um, it wasn't easy. Um, when we signed those papers, um, I, I knew at the time that I was a little, I was gonna be sad about it, but at the same time I had so much pride because this is what you wanted to do. And so then I think we were, honored actually to sign those papers because that's what was in your heart that's what you wanted to do thank you thank you uh, so the next question is um, what do you remember about your feelings when the news first broke that the war had started um you know uh, we had moved to New Hampshire and um, we drove down actually to see you off on your Mediterranean cruise. We, we did come down to off off every time you were leaving so that we could send you off and wish you well. And Saddam Hussein had just invaded Kuwait um, several days before. So we knew that coming down, but of course we had no idea what was going to happen. And um, you knew when we got here, you knew that you were going to be going into the Gulf and um, and the ship was going to be put in harm's way along with its crew. Oh, so I then had to come to terms with that. Um, it wasn't, it was sad. It, it was sad and at the same time, um, it was, going to be an adventure for you on this great battleship and um, your uncle told me that she was a mighty lady 
and you would be safe. Um, and he spent 25 years in the Air Force, um, so I kind of believed him. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and she is. And she is. She is a beautiful lady. It's a very good chick. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, you take deep breaths. You do a lot of praying. And um, lots of hard hugging before you left. <laughs> um, what was communication like for you? Uh, how often... If you remember, how often did we write, did we call? Mm -hmm. And how did you feel when you got that first phone uh, phone call or that first letter home? Yeah. You know, um, being that you were on a ship and you were on cruises for a long period of time, the letter was the communication of the day. We didn't have the cell phone. There wasn't the computer. So it was interesting to me because when Dad was in Vietnam, it was letter writing that took place. And then with you, um, you know, 18, 19 years later, you were, it was the same communication. It was waiting for that letter or waiting for the phone call because I could not pick up the phone and call you. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember that um, the first time you called, um, I grabbed the phone and I, I had no, pencil and paper around in the telephone book, which is what we used in the day, was sitting on the kitchen table. I turned to a blank page and I wrote down the date and you were, I think, in the UAE at the time. Um, I, I think that's where you were. And, and so I wrote down bits and pieces about what we talked about. Um, did I always get through the phone calls without crying? Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. But it was the snail mail. And um, when when the first letter came and, and I knew that you were okay, it was, it was, it was, um, it, it helped me. It helped me to, you know, to just, to calm down and, and okay, this is going to be all right. We're going to, we're going to get through this together. Um, so, as deployment wound down, mm -hmm. and you knew I was on my way home, mm -hmm. uh, were you able to relax a little bit, or were you still nervous? Oh, I was still nervous. <laughs> so now, um, you know, now it, you, you come home. Um, I think it was very around Easter. Um, so now we drive down from New Hampshire. And, you know, being up there was very hard for me also, because the move happened after you were in the Navy. And so we didn't have friends and family around us for support. So I felt isolated a lot of the time. Um, I did find a support network that worked for me. Um, so when we, when we heard about your coming home, it's the excitement that is behind that. Then you have the, the nervousness because the ship's not here yet. Um, and then we arrived in Norfolk, and then your ship docked, and you were all in your dress blues. And um, I remember that we were we were all on the pier, and it was wonderful because it was wives and children and mom and dad and brothers and sisters, and the feeling was just like I'm sitting here now and I'm feeling the excitement of that. Um, then, I don't know exactly how it happened, but we were allowed, I think, to go to your workstation, and because you were a quartermaster and on the bridge, that's where we went. And... Um, you handed me a rose because every sailor had a rose to give to their mom, their wife, their sweetheart. And so that rose came to me. And um, then I was able to take a breath. But not until then. I had to see you first. And then I was able to just, that was a really good thing. I don't remember everything around it when Daddy came home from Vietnam. And I met him at the airport. Someone asked me a while ago, what do you remember? 
and I realized that I didn't remember the circumstances around anything. I saw him come off the plane. I know that we hugged each other, and that's really what I remember. And so it was with, with you, it was the waiting for the ship with all the other people. And then how I got to the bridge, I couldn't tell you how that all happened, but it was very exciting. And then I was able to, okay, God brought him home. He made it, he's here. Yeah. So dad, do you have any thoughts on, on that? How you felt when, when I got home? When I was home? When you got home, I felt uh, ecstatic. When you were leaving, I, I had two feelings. One was crying. My son was going, going off in a battleship, and and uh, uh, the other one was uh, extreme worry. Uh, I've already been to Vietnam. I knew war. I knew a war zone, and and within a war zone, anything can happen at any time. So that was the reason that I was. Because even though you're on the ship, meant nothing, okay? Uh, you can get into as much uh, a fighting as the rest of us. And, and, uh, but I was very, very happy he got it. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so, uh, my last question is uh, when you visit the ship today, do you still feel like you did 30 years ago when when I left and then when I came home again from the Persian Gulf? Because it's it's uh, it's 30 years ago, of course. It this, is. This past uh, yeah. this past January, yes. February. I I love this ship. Um, I think she's absolutely magnificent. Um, she brought her sailors home from harm's way. The fact that she I mean she's here she's living and um, and we're able to to come and and visit you and and, and visit her she's when we went on that we went on a cruise when after you came home from the Gulf and she was going to be um, I guess as a deep commissioned again and so they had this family cruise that you we, you know, we came down and went on that with you. That is a feeling that I will never, ever forget, being on her while she went out and the guns went off. Um, I'm probably not using military jargon, but it, it's what I remember and experienced. Um, and she's just, we, the fact that you went on a battleship, you know, because she was brought back to life, um, in the 80s, and I think that it's magnificent. And now, there are no active battleships that I know of, um, but I, I think it's magnificent that she's here, that people get to visit, even if they have no association with a loved one having been in the Navy, and for children to come and see this, um, it's, it's wonderful. And um, I guess I get a little, besides the pride that I feel for you and for what everyone is doing here, um, I just, I get really sentimental about, about her. Um, so it's, yeah, it's an unbelievable experience. And I think everyone should experience it because it's, it's, it's um, priceless. Um, I can't find enough words, so yeah. I'm rambling. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a little museum for uh, what went on in the past. Yeah. So I would recommend every everyone to come here. Uh, the reason for that is there's just so much history in your ship. So much mm -hmm. history. A lot of things went on. Uh, it's for me, I mean, I don't know what visit this is, seven or eight or ten, uh, but I still don't know all that much about the ship. It's just so, so great and, and so technical and, and uh, 
to me, it's it's a com complete reversal that being in a jungle every day. Uh, it's just a, a different way to find a war uh, from a different perspective. And, you know. and I think when I'm thinking about this, coming onto the ship, and now that so many departments and areas are open, to go to the bridge where you actually worked, where you worked on your charts, mm -hmm. and to see your rack and where you slept. Um, it, I don't know, it's, it, it's, I can't find the words to explain, because it, it, it brought it all to life. It's, I don't ever want to go to Vietnam to see where daddy was. <laughs> yeah. But to come here, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good, good thing. Thank you very much. So I want to thank you again for joining me today on this virtual adventure. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So the ship is alive and there's a lot of activities going on. Uh, so there's a lot of background noise and I, I, I want to apologize for that. Uh, but I hope, I hope that the, the sentiment behind everything uh, came through loud and clear, even though the, uh, there was all that background noise. But uh, like my parents were saying, John and Linda were saying, the, the ship is open, we're full of history, and the ship is alive, uh, and the, the crew now makes it so. Uh, and I invite you all to, uh, to come and enjoy, enjoy us, enjoy visiting, experience the ship. If you've been before, uh, come back again. We've always got new things going on. If you've never been here before, uh, this is an iconic piece of American naval history. Uh, Battleship 64, the USS Wisconsin. Uh, she's, uh, she's the last battleship built by the United States Navy. She is the last battleship to fire her guns in, uh, in anger uh, in world history. So there's a, there's a lot of history that, that, that happens here on board the battleship and we're proud uh, to display the battleship and, and show everyone around and explain what it is that, that she can do. So again, uh, my name is Keith Nitka, the Battleship Operations Manager, and thank you again for joining me today on this uh, Whiskey Virtual Adventure.